Hello student, I am your APD ma'am. Now this is your second class on the chapter Reproduction in Plants. Now today we are just going to start the sexual reproduction in plants. So all of you know that the main reproductive organ of the plant is actually the flower and today we just discuss about the structure of the flower and the types of the flower okay so let's start So here, it's a cross section of a flower. Now, all of you know that flower has four holes. So, the first one is the calyx. And the unit of the calyx is actually the sepal so here the greeny part which provide the protection of the bird is actually the sepal and many sepals form the calyx so the next part is the corolla now it's very colorful in most of the flowers and the unit of it is known as the petal so here this yellowish colors are the petals and it's important for attracting the pollinators and it's help in the reproduction of the plants okay now the next one the male part of the flower is known as the androsia and its unit is the stamen so here this is the stamen and each stamen has two parts the first one is the anther now see, it's the anther in which the pollen grains are produced and stored. And the next one is the filament. Okay, now here, it's actually connect the anther to the flower base. Now the next one is the gynoseum. Now it's the female part and its unit is the pistil and each pistil has three parts stigma, style and ovary. So the first one this is the stigma and this is the style and at the base the bulky region is the ovary and inside the ovary there are many ovules okay so these are the holes of the flower so in the next slide we just see the structure in some original flower pictures so see now it's very common it's china rose or hibiscus and here this greenish color this portion is actually the sepal now the next one now the red color portions are the petal 
and next this portion now if this portion you see this portion in a larger view then we can see that the anther the yellowish color structure and the filament very tiny structure that connect the anther to this elongated structure now it's the filament and this anther or filament this portion is known as the androsium or the male part of the flower now the next one female part so first one this is the stigma this is the style and this is the ovary so this is all about the structure or the holes of the flower okay now if we cross set the anther now this is the stamen so it's anther and its filament or stalk now if we cross set the anther and see under the microscope then we can found that many pollen grains are present inside the pollen sac and these pollen grains are very important for the production of the male gametes okay now the next one the female part is the pistil now this is the stigma this is the style and this is the ovary now if we cut the ovary and see it's the ovary wall or ovary wall and inside it these are the ovules now these ovules are very important because inside it female gamete or the egg is formed so here see this is the pollen now under the pollen there are the sperm cells or the male gamete these two blackish structure and here if we cut the ovule we can see that this is the egg shell okay this one and another cell is the central cell okay so these are the reproductive structures that are important for the reproduction sexual reproduction on the plant the next if we categorize the flower then we can found that unisexual and bisexual flower now see if both the stamen and the pistil in the first case both the stamen bluish and the pistil pinkish in color are present in a common flower then it is known as the bisexual flower because both the male and the female part is present okay now the next one if any one if only stamen or only pistil is present it's known as the unisexual flower now if the stamen is present it's known as the staminated flower and if only pistil is present now it is known as pistillate flower okay now the next one if these flowers are present both the male and the female flowers are present in a common plant it's known as the hermaphrodite flowers plants okay now if only one in a branch it's the male one and in another branch it's only the female one so it's known as the monoecious plant and that means in the monoecious plant both the male flower 
and the female flower is present. And how can we differentiate from the plant having the hermaphrodite or bisexual flower? Because in the first case, the flowers are bisexual means in a in the same flower, both the male and the female part is present. Now, in the monoecious flower, flowers are unisexual, but they are present in a common plant. Okay. Now, it's the monoecious plant. And the next one is the dioecious plant. Now, here, the male plant and the female plant is totally separate so it's known as dioecious plant so now we're just going to see the examples of these flowers and the plants so here the first one the hibiscus bisexual next one the papaya flower it's unisexual we can get uh, in male and also female okay and monoecious plant is the corn because at the apex of the flower these are the male flower and at the basal part of the plant it's the female so in a common plant we get the male flower as well as the female flower so it's a monoecious plant and the date plant, date plum is actually the diocese here. The male plant and the female plant are different. So these are the examples of unisexual, bisexual flower as well as the monoecious and diocese plant. So this is all about today's topic. Thank you.